Hello. I'm rendering a video that I edited. Edit. I've been editing it. Um, I've probably spent three or four hours editing, and now I'm rendering it. And you can see it's taken an, an hour, and it so far, and it's gonna take 40 more minutes to finish rendering. Because uh, I, I put a lot of text in it uh, to clarify some things. And it's made out of about five or six different uh, clips that they were recorded within an hour of being in at the gym of me reading a book and I'm reading it in Spanish because it's the books in Spanish and uh, so while that's being rendered hmm, I could work on another video uh, I'd like to uh, read and meditate on uh, on this book uh, Transformation of Suffering A Handbook for Practitioners by Kenshin Kunchuk Gyaltsen Rinpoche uh, Thanks to a uh, friend and teacher Ani Chime uh, Angela Harkavy Brazilian mm, uh, ordained nun in the Drikung Kagyu tradition uh, she now lives in Brazil but she used to live uh, in Davenport Florida that's way south of here, of Orlando. Uh, south of Disney World. Uh, just a little south. And so I used to go uh, receive teachings there. And there I'm... Uh, that must have been around 2011 or so. I'm guessing. Or... And, uh, in around 2012 or 13 or so, uh, she, uh, in, invited Lama Glenn Mullen, Mullen, uh, Tibetologist, to come and give teachings, and, uh, that was pretty awesome. And she, uh, recommended this book for, uh, practitioners. And we uh, studied it uh, at her house in our meetings. And so I'd like to uh, get some ideas from this book. Mm. Uh, from chapter one, uh, Precious Human Life. And guess what comes after that? Chapter two. Wait a minute. Oh, wow. Chapter 2 is in permanence, and it's pretty short, but Chapter 3 is on suffering, and it's a, little, a bit longer. Very long. Pretty long. And then uh, four, Chapter 4 is on karma, and Chapter 5 is on refuge, going for refuge. And in... In my meditation sessions, reading and meditation sessions, I like to go for refuge in the beginning. So I, I could look up, see if I find what <clears throat> what is a good, uh, like a refuge prayer kind of thing to say. Hmm. Well, here's a short one, I guess. 
And I guess we we have to say that uh, since we go for refuge in the three jewels, uh, typically it would only take three uh, verses or three sayings or three lines to complete the refuge prayer. But we should do it again three times. <laughs> And we should prostrate, too. Or mentally prostrate. Hmm. Uh, I could read from here, page 94. So we could say, We take refuge in the glorious kind root and lineage lamas. We take refuge in the deities of the mandalas of the Yidams. We take refuge in all the exalted Buddhas. We take refuge in the perfect Dharma. We take refuge in the excellent order of the Sanghas. We take refuge in all the noble Dakas, Dakinis, and Dharma guardians, possessors of the Eye of Wisdom. Okay, so, uh, in essence, is if when we take refuge in the three jewels, essentially it's taking refuge in all the exalted Buddhas. That's the first jewel, the Buddha. And then taking refuge in the perfect sa uh, Dharma. That's the teachings or the doctrines. Of whatever leads to happiness. We take refuge in the excellent order of the Sanghas. That's the third refuge. That's that's the community of practitioners. Okay, so I take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. There. The the lines before and after were additions that um, that are uh, part of the uh, you could say the tantric Tibetan Buddhist uh, edition you could say because uh, in Tibetan Buddhism uh, um, you should uh, try to uh, get guidance from a, a master and that would be so that's why you take refuge in the glorious kind root and lineage lamas so those are teachers that have a lineage and uh, they're glorious because uh, they have attained uh, excellent uh, realizations and the in kind root means that mm, they're part of your uh, root practice or the the essential practice uh, the one you have after serious investigation you you've discovered that that's the most suitable uh, lineage and uh, root. Mm. Root, root, as in the tree that has its roots, that suggests that uh, from it uh, grows uh, the teachings <clears throat> or it brings the teachings from the, from the ground <clears throat> uh, let's see I'm just imagining or uh, coming up with uh, what I think it means so then uh, after the 
refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha that it says we take refuge in all the noble Dakas, Dakinis, and Dharma guardians, possessors of the Eye of Wisdom. That's uh, interesting. Uh, it's kind of new to me. I know what Dakas and Dakinis are more or less. They're kind of like angels. Dakas are male angels and Dakinis are female angels. And Dharma guardians, they're like guardian angels. And possessors of the Eye of Wisdom. I guess that's a, a glorified way of describing Dakas Dakinis and Dharma guardians. They possess an they each possess eyes of wisdom. That suggests uh, wisdom Buddhas, or they they are uh, omniscient, or uh, or if not totally omniscient, uh, they uh, they are on their way, or they understand uh, em emptiness. <clears throat> okay, that's what comes to mind uh, take it um, may it help you I guess um, but uh, that's good uh, but uh, I wanted to uh, get into chapter one as a motivation for uh, Taking this path, uh, well, actually, all all these f first four chapters, chapter five is on refuge. So the first four chapters lead to why we take refuge, and the first four chapters are pretty uh, awesome and and have a certain order. You start with chapter one, the precious human life, and then impermanence. Uh, followed by suffering and then fourth uh, karma so those are actually four uh, meditations that are that can be done in the beginning of a practice in the karma kagyu tradition I remember that at the beginning of each meditation they would go through through these four thoughts, the, our precious human life, uh, impermanent suffering, uh, karma. Uh, usually in that order, maybe not exactly, but therefore in there. I think maybe five, maybe uh, uh, I remember. Uh, but if not refuge, then they replaced it with Buddha or or the Four Noble Truths or meditating on uh, the uh, solution to uh, suffering. So this book is about the transformation of suffering or the end of suffering. Uh, Roger Publications, Gainesville, Florida. That's the teacher. He's come to uh, Tampa Bay area a few times, but I haven't, I didn't get a, a chance to see him. But he lives in, as far as I know, I don't know if he still lives there, but he lives in Maryland in a center there. Uh, so he's highly regarded. And so I'd like to... Uh, Think about uh, our precious human life. That's the first meditation of the four. Uh, because uh, I think the purpose of meditating on this precious human life is to give us an urgency and it's inspiration to get us on the path and I think 
that it makes sense to meditate on this especially for a uh, a society a culture that believes and is convinced of of uh, rebirth reincarnation I may be wrong but I think that if if you grow up in an environment that that accepts that after you die you come back then uh, then uh, that's that would lead you to have some a little bit of a complacency and say that oh if 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 you don't get it right th this time then then there's always the next life and and har well the the um, benefit of of believing in reincarnation or rebirth is that then you're more relaxed you should be more relaxed towards uh, if you don't get things done this life there's always the next life perhaps and I'm, I'm not sure uh, I, I I wasn't born in a environment in a culture in a country that that everyone believed in reincarnation so I'd have to go live in in a, such a country and and see what it's like and what what the attitude is towards uh, death and rebirth and if it affects one's urgency I suspect, and I've read places where, where like living in India, then there's a less urgency, and compared to uh, living in a place where there's only this life and that's it. I've read an account uh, that uh, has a. A meeting of two minds, uh, one from, uh, uh, per it, perhaps it was Greece, and, and uh, the other person was perhaps from India, perhaps a Hindu monk or something like that, or it could have been just regular people from those regions, and one of them believed in, the Greek or we Western person believed in, and this is the only life so you get one shot and the person from the east believed that that this is this is, isn't the only life and so you come back so there's no hurry so be happy don't worry be happy so the person from the west who believed this was your only sh uh, shot at anything had an urgency to get something done in this life so that person uh, went to become a conqueror and um, what comes to mind is Alexander the Great and how he was able to conquer uh, a huge tract of land in little time and even reached India and perhaps that was a the encounter that he may have had, or someone like that had, with people from India. So anyway, that was an in interesting uh, idea. Uh, but uh, so, but so this first meditation on this precious human life is is perhaps geared to counter the thought that this life is not so precious that there'll be other lives that I'll have so why hurry to do anything in this life so in in this 
doctrine in Buddhism about this precious human life, there's a lot of stories that show, that suggest or that try to teach that this life is a very precious uh, in the scheme of uh, reincarnation uh, you you could be born uh, in in your next life as a human or an animal or a hungry ghost or a hell being being in a hell realm so there's three realms be three realms below the human realm uh, animal hungry ghost and hell being so um, and then above humans you could be born uh, uh, a be uh, a god, but there's two kinds of gods. There's the there's there are gods that are jealous of of the gods above them. <laughs> there there's the gods that that have it all, and the gods below those uh, they're jealous of those, and they're they're struggling to fight and conquer them or take over their position <laughs> but they 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 don't have much luck uh, so there's two above human and three below human so so there's teachings uh, that in the um, meditation on this precious human life to try to convince you that um, you're pretty lucky to be to have been born a human in this life uh, and one of the teachings is um, let's see one day the Buddha scraped up some dust with his thumbnail and asked Ananda where is there more dust on my nail or on this earth and ananda said oh lord of course there's no comparing the dust on your nail with the dust on the earth buddha said likewise the sentient beings in the three lower realms are like the dust on this earth while the number of human beings is like the dust on my nail. Among human beings, how many are interested in dharma, study, and practice? Very few. And how many really have the time to practice? Very, very few. We can see this with our own eyes. That's pretty uh, impactful to imagine that, that there are beings there are, you could say souls that number um, that the number of souls in uh, the hell realms and in the uh, hungry ghost realm and in the animal realm far outnumber the beings in the human realm by insignificant like the dust that you scrape on your fingernail compared to the dust on the earth so it's insignificant the population of humans is insignificant compared to what other beings there are uh, I don't I don't uh, know if he if if the Buddha meant on this earth or in the universe that probably just on this earth 
there's more beings that are non-human. And as consciousnesses, uh, we were born human. And we could have been born those other kinds of beings. So that makes our life precious. Or we got lucky. Mm, and then there's another teaching before that. Um, let's see. Okay. Suppose this whole universe were an ocean. On the surface of the ocean is a yoke floating with the currents, never staying in one place. There is also a turtle deep in the ocean that lacks eyes to see the, the yoke. Just as the yoke lacks consciousness to sense the turtle, the turtle uh, surfaces every hundred years for uh, air. Now, not easy for the turtle who lives for a thousand years to put his head through the yoke. A thousand divided by a hundred, that's ten times. Uh, he gets a chance to get his head through the yoke. To be born in a precious human body is even more difficulty. Man, so that's like winning the lottery. <laughs> or even rare. So we can see that the, the teaching basically says that we won the lottery by being born human. So maybe this is supposed to make us feel better or lucky that, or g grateful. Maybe that's the, the purpose of the teaching, to make us feel grateful for being born human and not take this life so casually. To get us to, to practice the Dharma, the Dharma is the set of Buddhist teachings or the doctrine of Buddhism. And in general, whatever practice, uh, I wouldn't say makes you happy. I would say leads you to a perfect happiness or bliss. <clears throat> so, mm, so that's... Uh, there's more um, more in this chapter than I can put in this video. I've probably said enough, it's long enough, this video, to cut it down. So I'll, I'll go back to the chapter and in, in, uh, read up on... Uh, I uh, find interesting the ten, uh, let's see, I don't know what they call it, I think they call it, uh, the, 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 the ten endowments, those with oneself and those coming from others. They were outlined by Nagarjuna. The five endowments related to oneself are as follows. Da, 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 da. And then there's five endowments related to others. So that's all in chapter one. So I don't know if the ten endowments are related to our precious human life. I think they suggest how precious it is for us to to find uh, the Buddha Dharma. That how pre rare it was for us to uh, to have obtained the conditions for a Buddha 
to have uh, arisen. 2.5 thousand years ago. And how, how great an impact he made and how he was able to inspire others to preserve the teachings and to, yeah, to develop it and keep it going this far. So it was pretty amazing, uh, I would think. So I hope this uh, helped somebody out there and whatever merits I acquired from doing this, uh, I renounce them and give, give them away to others. Thank you.